hey what's up um i know it's been a while since i made a video so i finally got this done i've been wanting to make this video for a while but i've been putting it off because a i have to make a, a blog post about it with you know a list with all this stuff on there so that way you can come back to it and when it comes to writing man i get real lazy when it comes to writing i hate writing and that's why it took so long i finally got it done so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the, the link to the blog with uh this list uh of stuff that you need when you go on the road that way you can come back to it anytime and and see what you need out of there but i, I it's going to be a long video so this is uh, i separated them into essentials that you must have in the truck to make your life easier and then non-essential but you can still they're good to have because it makes your life on the road a lot easier so i'm going to get into this like i'm going to leave the list like i said so you can always come back to it and look uh for the stuff you need um if you look here you can see the the gps that i always stress the garmin gps uh the otr 700 this is essential this is something you have to have uh in the truck because you don't want to lose your roof by using a google or one of those free uh trucker apps so i always stress how important this is another thing you're going to need is uh, a headset if you go on the road you're going to see all almost all the truck drivers have a headset on and it's uh it's so they can talk because when you're on the road the trucks are so loud and it's like talking to a bulldozer when my when my drivers call me and you know and they don't have one of these they'll have some makeshift headphone or makeshift headphone or or they have me on speaker is one of the most frustrating things because I can never hear them, man. It's like talking to a bulldozer, man, and, and it drives me nuts. So if you wanna, you know, to call your dispatcher, your carrier, or or call home, you're gonna need one of these. This is like the the best of the best when it comes to headset. Um, I'm no longer on the road, but I still use mine to do uh, dispatching. This one is the the Blue Parrot for 450. And what it does, it's a noise cancellation. So what it does, it cancels the noise of the truck. I mean, the trucks are stupid loud. And this cancels all the noises. So my drivers that, that actually have this stuff, um, it's like talking to them. And it's like they're talking from a closet. It's, it's, it's clear. It's crisp. You don't even hear the truck. So you'll see these on the road. You'll see a whole bunch of uh, truckers with these. And this is what they have. This is the Blue Pair 450. Um, definitely get you one of those if you plan on you know because you're going to be bored on the road and you're going to be calling your wife kids friends all the time you know to keep you uh from going crazy and you're going to need one of these so they can hear you and so you can hear them uh the next thing is a pallet jack excuse me for a minute let me uh, pause this sorry i had to get a drink of water man um this is a pallet jack this is important everybody knows this this is like a carpenter without a hammer you have to have a pallet jack you can find one on Amazon, but you can find them cheaper on Uline. And if you're going to get them on Uline, put them on the Net30 account. So that way you can um, uh, build your business credit. Make sure you get a Dunn's number also. So that way you can build your, your business credit and get it on Uline. Um, these are our straps. These are ratchet straps. I'm sure most of you guys know them. I had the truck over the house, you know, um, over the weekend. And I was going to make a video of how to use these e-straps. E e they're hard, I mean, they're not hard to use, but you know, most people don't know how to use them when they first start. I was gonna make a video, it was snowing, it was cold. I, I couldn't even get the lock off the, off the back. So when I get a chance, I'll make them. I keep 12 in the truck. Um, make sure to keep at least 10, because you need these to secure your load. And these are pro important. The next thing you see here is moving blankets. Um, the thing about moving blankets, you're not going to always use them. You know, you're going to get tired of having to take them off the truck uh, and put them back on the truck when you're picking up and dropping off loads. What I do is I keep 20. I, I put a stack of 10 here, stack of 10 here neatly. And I use the little uh, ratchet straps that I get at Walmart. They're, they sell them in two packs. They're like 10 bucks. And you just strap them up real tight. So when you get off the truck, you just grab them, toss them, and then don't forget to put them back on the truck uh, before you leave. But you have to have them. Um, there's going to be loads, not all those come on pallets and you're going to have machinery that's going to need to be protected from the straps because you don't want the straps or the, the load bars to scratch them up because then it, that's a whole different problem. Um, the next thing you're going to need is a, is a suitcase. Um, I made a video about this, uh, the suitcase I have and the, and the bags I use to pack in here. You know, it has to be small enough where you can put it in the front 
cabin, you know, sometimes you have too many, you have 12 pallets, you're not going to be able to fit in the back or they'll put a seal on the, on the back and you need access to your luggage. So small enough, but make sure that it packs a lot of stuff. You know, you need a good one. Don't get your grandfather's uh, luggage that's as big as a refrigerator because you're going to have problems. You need one with big wheels that you're going to be able to pull uh, during the, through the hallways of the hotels. Um, this is a, a car, car charger mount. Um, this is the one I use. Um, this is my favorite. I've used other ones. I've always keep, I always keep two phones. I keep an AT and T phone and a Verizon phone in case one tower doesn't work. You know, at least I have the other. And I bought another brand than this, and they would always break down. Man, this is like the most that uh, that that stays strong for me. This one's a wireless charger. You have to make sure your phone is capable of charging wirelessly. And when you put the phone on the thing, it automatically closes it. So this is the one I use. Um, this is one that, that served me the best. Um, if you don't have a wireless charger, you can still use it. Because like I said, it's strong. Keep it on the shortest uh, thing. Don't extend them out where they're just going to keep bouncing and bouncing. And eventually it's going to break and it's going gonna, it's gonna to smash your phone. So make sure you get a good uh, phone mount. This is a, a plug. This is a converter. You put this in the cigarette lighter and it just turns into a, a, a thing you can plug in. You're not going to be able to plug in a refrigerator, but you can plug in uh, your chargers for your phone, tablets, maybe even a laptop. You can put uh, what I do is I use I, I, I put an extender on this, a lighter case extender, and I use my, my heating box. I have a lunchbox that heats up that I use to cook with and I put my uh, GPS on this. So this is good to have. And make sure you turn this off. Every time you get off the truck, turn it off because this has a fan that keeps it cool. So every time you get out, get out of the truck, always unplug everything, all your chargers and everything. This one is obvious. This is uh, uh, extra charger cords. Charger cords break like, like glass. You know, they always break. And on the road, the phone is your lifeline. And if you can't charge your phone, you're going to have problems, especially during, you know, in the mountains. So make sure you get a, a, a set of uh, spare um, charger cords. This one's for Androids if you need a iPhone, you know, get an iPhone, obviously. Um, this is that extension I was telling you about to extend. Most trucks come with one, maybe two at the most, but mostly come with one uh, cigarette lighter. You plug this into the, to that converter right here on the end, and then you can turn it into three. Um, three lighter cases. You just plug it into here. Um, what I do is I plug in my GPS in there and I, uh, I, I plug in my, uh, my heated lunchbox that I use for cooking. And then you have another one in case you have uh, something else that needs, needs the charger for the, from the cigarette lighter. Next you're going to need is a tape measure. Make sure it's over 26 feet. This is uh, something you really need. You can put it on the side door or put it in your best pocket. There's going to be times, you know, shippers, they like to pack stuff in the truck. Sometimes things don't fit. So you're going to have to measure pallets and, and see, you know, figure out a way that you can fit this stuff in the truck. So if you have one at home, make sure it's at least 26 feet, you know, the length of the box in the back and take it with you because you're going to need it. These are the bags I was telling you about for the luggage. I have a video um, on this stuff. And this is like the best thing when packing because these are called packing bags. Um, in one bag, I'll put like 12, 12 pairs of socks and about eight pairs of uh, boxers. I'll put like 12 t-shirts, eight pairs of pants, sweaters. I use long sleeve shirts. I'll put like about seven or eight shirts. Um, this bag right here, it's a waterproof bag. I put my sandals in there. And I can't stress how important it is to have sandals when you go in the shower. You don't want to be stepping on all that piss and stuff. So this is good to have. I have a video I'll look for and I'll link it into the description so that you can see how much I pack into this stuff. Again, here's the, the shower shoes. This is important, you know, you're in public bathroom. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have done this. I've done it before where you get in the shower and all of a sudden you get the urge to piss and then you, end, you know, piss on the shower. Um, you try to hit the drain, but you know, most people don't do that. If you're gonna use a public bathroom, you can guarantee that people have pissed on that floor. Those truck drivers have been on the road for months and months at a time, they are sexually frustrated. And they might do other stuff in there in that bathroom. You don't want to step on all that crap. And plus all the dirt and crud that comes off of them. So make sure you have shower shoes. These have holes in them so that the water can drain and they can dry faster. 
And when you're done with these, put them in that waterproof bag so you can keep it separate from your clothes when you put it in the suitcase. Don't ever put these dirty uh, sandals, you know, with the clothes. Make sure you put them in the waterproof bag, you know, with the other stuff. But you have to have them. Now, these little pouches, these are I use for packing too. Um, these are little pouches. They're strong with zippers. In one bag, I might put my soap, uh, shampoo, conditioner because you... The, the stuff, the soap and the, and the stuff in the hotels are like chalk. You know, it just leaves this nasty film. So you're going to have to bring your own soap, put it in a, in, a, in a soap dish, and then put it in the bag. And then another bag, I have like lotion, Q-tips. Uh, another bag, I might have, uh, you know, toothpaste, toothbrush, floss, a mouthwash. When you do your toothbrush, make sure you put it in one of those plastic things and cover them up because you don't want to lay your toothbrush on a public sink and, you know, in a hotel or something. And then put it in your mouth because it's nasty. So these pouches are great. They, you can put your stuff. One bag I used to put all my, my charger cords and stuff, you know, all my chargers to keep them in one place. And I fit all of this in the suitcase, man. I'm telling you, these things are awesome. The next thing you're going to need is a, is, a, is a trash can. You're going to be living a lot in the, in the cab of this truck. And you're going to need somewhere. You're going to produce a lot of garbage. So either you're going to throw it out the window or you're going to end up throwing it on the floor and making a mess in the truck. This is collapsible, so what it does, it goes down. I put it underneath the, the gear shift, and I have it right next to my foot. So when I bring the garbage, I put it in there. Every time I stop for fuel, I take it out, put it in the, in the garbage can in the, in the fuel stop, and put it right back. So make sure you grab one of these because you're going to need it. Um, the next thing you're going to need is a broom and a dustpan. I see a lot of people don't, don't, don't have these. You really need to have them because there's going to be shippers that will turn you down. You could be driving 75 miles deadhead to go pick up a load and go. In the, and when they come to, to load your box, they'll see all the mess, you know, the pieces of, 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 of pallets and dirt and all kinds of, of junk on the floor. And they'll turn you away. If, you have, if you're picking up food loads, which happens a lot where they put the seal in the back, the, the requirements, you have to have a clean truck. It has to be fruit, food grade, which is... I don't know what it means. I, I just take it as a clean truck. And if they see all that dirty in the back, they're going to they're gonna refuse you and you're going to lose the load and you're going to be driving for nothing. Grab this uh, broom and a dustpan and stick it in the back of the E-Track and let it sit there. And then every time you stop at a fuel stop or a Walmart or a hotel, check the back. And if it's dirty, sweep it up. Sweep it up. Don't be that one person that gets turned away because you have a mess in the back, man. Put a broom in there and clean that crap up, man, so that way you don't get turned away. Um, this is a, a pallet, uh, pallet chop. This stops the pallet from, you know, rolling around. And this is important because that pallet jack goes flying if you don't strap it down right. Um, before what I used to do, I used to strap it uh, with the E-Track. I tie it real tight on the handle, but the bottom will still go flying. So what you do is you put the, the pallet under, uh, the pallet jack under a pallet, jack it up till it can't go no more without lifting the pallet. Put this under the wheel. It's going to stop it from going back and forth and then tie it up with the E-strap e e because if you don't do that and that pallet jack goes flying back there, it's going to destroy the freight. They're going to put a claim on your insurance and your insurance is going to go up. So make sure that you strap down that pallet jack. I can't tell you how important that is. That thing goes flying all the time. Uh, this is a vest. This is a good vest. It has a bunch of pockets. You put your pens, your, your uh, tape measure. A lot of shippers won't let you in the building without one of these. Some won't even let you uh, on construction sites without a helmet. So make sure you have this uh, so you can get in. And plus, you can wear it while you're driving because when you go on these truck stops, you have all kinds of trucks coming in and out. And you want to make sure you, you get seen. You don't want to get ran over by some trucker that's not paying attention. Now, you're going to need some good boots. Um, I learned the hard way. I, I had a pair of Air Max that were brand new. Uh, I was in, Men I think it was Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And I started kicking the pallet, and I ended up busting the bubble on the back of the, on the bottom of the, the, the Air Max. And next thing you know, for like two weeks, I'm sitting there with, you know, my, my shoes all screwed up and ended up ripping it. And there was another time where I got my, uh, my foot stubbed by the pallet jack. And my foot was like, it was sore for like four or five days, man. It was one of the most awful experiences. If you're going to be working in the back, you're going to get your foot stubbed. And you're going to get your foot pinched by the pallet jack or, or the pallets or, or, you know, climbing up and down the truck. You need a good pair of boots. I use Columbia because Columbia are waterproof. They're rugged. They're slip resistant. And they go up to minus 31 degrees, you know, in the winter. They keep your feet warm. 
I walk in puddles with this and, and I don't even worry about it. So make sure you have a good pair of boots and make sure you have, if you have sneakers, if you're going to bring sneakers, you can use them for driving because you're not going to be driving. You don't want to drive with boots on, you know, for 12, 13 hours a day. So if these are good to have in the back, you're going to stub your toes. And depending what kind of shoes you have on, if you have regular sneakers, you're going to rip them. You're going to stub your toe. You might even break your toe. So have a good pair of boots. Uh, the next thing you're going to need are two things. These are uh, rainproof pants and rainproof uh, jacket. These are important because you're always going to run into rain. And while they're, whether you, you, you know, your, your truck, your tires break down or you have to go out or your truck breaks down, you have to go in the port and rain. This happened to me before, but I had this in the truck. So I don't get wet waiting for, uh, to unload a load and it's pouring rain outside. You can't wait all day for the rain to go. So you're going to either you have to get out, get your clothes soaked or you put one of these on. What I do is I keep them in one of those luggage bags and I, I leave them under the seat. If it's raining a lot, 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 I just put them on in the truck. And then when I'm done, I put them back off and I put them right back where they belong. man. Because If you're going to get soaked outside, if you get soaked on the road, you're going to be driving for like two or three hours waiting to dry up and stick into the seats. And it's one of the worst feelings, especially when it's cold outside. So waterproof pants, waterproof jacket. Um, gloves are important because two things. You're going to freeze your hands when you're pumping gas. You're going to be out there. I've seen people just shaking like, uh, like they're about to die, just shaking from the cold, you know, holding the damn water pump. Or, and you need these for the back because you're going to end up pinching your finger or cutting your finger, messing with the, the E-straps or the, or the load bars, even the pallet jack. I got my stuff pinched a lot of times, man, those little blood clots. So you're going to need these for the cold, and you're going to need these to protect your hands while you're loading and unloading and strap everything down. You're going to need a scully hat that pulls over your uh, over your ears. You know, some people will think they're too cute for that. But when it's cold, there's nothing cute when you're shaking like a dog, man. Make sure you get one and leave it in the truck in case it rains or it snows. You at least protect your ears. 50% of the, your heat gets lost in, you know, through your head. So make sure you have this in the truck. Another thing you're going to need is a jacket. Um, People leave, you know, I see truckers out there with hoodies and they're freezing their asses off. It's like, dude, just get a jacket. You know, you don't need one that's big and fluffy. You just need one like this, like a Carhartt that's going to be small enough, enough to keep you warm, but small enough where you can put it behind the seat and in case you ever need it. Don't leave your state without a jacket because the weather in different states, the mountains, they have their own ways of making their own weather and it, it can get windy up there. You don't want to be up there with a hoodie. Uh, the first aid kit, you know, that's self-explanatory. What I do is I keep it under the, the seat by the, the fire extinguisher. You can put it by the door. You're going to get your hands cut. Like I said, you're going to get them cut in the back. Or even the bowls, you might get a paper cut from the bowls. And if you chew your fingers, you're going to end up, uh, your fingernails, you might end up, you know, getting uh, chewing off a hangnail and your thing is bleeding. So first aid kit is always good to have. Now, these aren't essential, but these are good to have. This is the lunchbox I was telling you about. What I do is I buy a bunch of those uh, those canned baked beans that, that pull out, and then I buy the, the hot dogs. And I throw it in there, the, the beans, two cans of beans and a hot dog, and I'll dry for a little bit, maybe about 20, 30 minutes. I'll stop at a rest stop. I'll take my 30-minute um, ELD break, and I'll just eat my lunch. You can cook all kinds of stuff. This thing, I think, goes up to about 200 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and chicken only needs to be 165 to be poorly cooked, so... You just have to use your imagination. You can cook soups. You can cook all kinds of stuff in this. You just have to use your imagination because if you're going to eat fast food uh, every day, you're going to regret it because it's going to slow you down. It's going to make you sluggish. When you're out there, I remember a lot of times I'd be in the bathroom, you know, in the truck stop bathroom taking a piss, and in comes this three, four, five hundred pound truck driver huffing and puffing, you know what I'm saying? Because this is all they eat is fast food on the road, man. If, if your plan is to eat, you know, McDonald's, Arby's and all that crap every day, you're not going to last long. It makes you tired. I mean, I like I eat fast food. I like fast food. And sometimes you don't have no choice but to eat fast food. But let me tell you something. If you eat that stuff every day, you're going to be sluggish. You're not going to want to drive and it's going to kill you, man. Truck driving is one of the most dangerous things, uh, jobs in this country. And it's not all because of the accident. It's because of, of food related problems, you know, heart attacks, strokes. Uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, and that's from eating fast food on the road. I mean, grab one of these, you know, talk to your wife and girlfriend and try to come up with uh, uh, recipes. Maybe when I get a chance, I'll make a bunch of recipes and show you how to, how to cook with this. And you can cook this while you're driving, then you pull to the side, take your break and eat lunch. Uh, another thing that I use, it's a little electric pan that I use. 
these are the the aluminum things you put in the tray when you use this box so that way you can just eat from there and then throw it away you don't have to clean up much uh, i use a six inch uh, electric pan i use a six inch because i'm by myself and two you know truck space in the truck is a premium so this is enough to make stuff for me and small enough where i can stick it behind the seat um i use this mostly when i'm doing my 34 hour uh reset uh, on the eld but like i said man the fast food and, and the restaurants on the road it'll kill you it'll make you lazy because you you know you're feeling groggy uh you won't get enough fiber another thing you got to get enough fiber on the road because if not you're gonna get stopped up you're gonna be like my cousin i had my cousin i was with him one day i was with him for a couple of weeks we went to california and a couple other places and he was topped up. He was topped up. He, he, I, I was looking at him, and I'm like, yo, what's wrong? He's like, man, I haven't shit in, in three days. I'm like, what? Dude, you've been in a hotel every day. Oh, you know, he's been topped up, and, you know, you, you got to watch what you eat. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the healthiest. I don't eat the best, but, you know, I figure I tell you because you guys might actually listen and, you know, you know, do something that I wouldn't do. Now, the spoons, I had spoons. I had plastic spoons, a bag of... Uh, uh, a sandwich bag full of plastic spoons and, and forks. It was a mess, but I usually, you know, I eat, I throw them away, but you can get a three-piece spoon and wash them. Uh, as far as the cooler, make sure the cooler is small. You don't have to have them. I had a big one when I first started out. It was big. It took up the whole passenger seat. I put the seatbelt on it to keep it in place. And one day I had, uh, I had nowhere to, uh, I had nowhere to sleep. I was in the mountains. I think I was in Wyoming. There was nowhere Nowhere to book a hotel. Everything was packed. I don't know what was going on, but I had to sleep sitting up, and it was one. It made for a, a rough night. It was one of the roughest nights that I can remember out on the road, and that's because I had this big ass cooler. And then I had to wait uh, two weeks till I went home to drop it off, and then I picked up a, a smaller one. So make sure the cooler fits on the floor on the passenger side, and never keep anything on the on the seat because you never know when you might have to lay on that thing. This is a load bar. This is a metal one. These are good to have because they're strong. I mean, you're not like straps. Like if you have eight pallets of boxes, 12, 10 pallets, you could put two of these and it'll hold it all in place. Now with these, you have to be careful because they're metal. Let's say you're transporting some equipment or, or some machinery. Make sure you put a, a wrap of blanket around it because if you put metal on metal, it's going to scratch it and you're going to damage it. And then they're going to try to put a claim on your insurance. So if you're going to use these, you don't have to have them because you have all the straps. But these are good to have because they're so strong and they're easy to put up. You just put them across and it'll hold all that stuff in place. Um, these load bars right here, these are the same thing, but these are for the bottom. These are not E-Track. Um, there's going to be loads that are low where you can't strap them because they're just below the E-Track. These go, you can put them on the baseboard, you spread them out, you squeeze them and then they, they tighten up. And these are metal also, so make sure you put a, a movement blanket on them so it doesn't scratch anything up. This is the Garmin GPS case. I don't use it, but you could use it. Um, what I recommend you do is always take the GPS out the truck. Never leave it on the truck because somebody is going to break in there. They're going to break your window, and you're going to be flying down the street with a broken window and no GPS. Always take your GPS with you no matter where you go. And the last thing on this list is the E-ring or O-ring. Um, you don't need these again. I have a, a few of them I keep. I tie, uh, I tie the whatchamacallit, uh, the pallet jack and, and other stuff to this thing. Um, they're pretty convenient to have. It's just the, the ring, that O-ring that goes into the E-track, and they're good to have. You don't really need them, but, you know, I'll put the list in the in the description. I'll put it in the comments. It's going to be on my on my website, so you can just go back to it anytime and figure out what you need uh, for the role, what you already have, and the stuff you need or the stuff that you want to take with you, and then you can find all this stuff on Amazon, so... I'll link it up. And again, sorry for, for the late video. I'm going to start posting more now. Now that the weather's warming up, uh, I'll start being, you know, I'll start making more videos. And and uh, I have some things planned for you guys. So you guys stay, uh, stay aware. Or just wait for it. <laughs> I'll see you guys.